Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, it's my pleasure to invite Pastor Chris Harrison up to share the word of God. Um, he is basically an annual speaker that we come and speak at EHDS, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in the next coming weeks. It'll be three weeks of discipleship training, a week, 10 days of mission. And uh, we get him here basically as much as we can because he's such a uh, dear brother in the Lord and such a tremendous testimony to us. And so I'm sure you're going to be blessed by hearing the word of God. Let's go ahead and give a hand for Pastor Chris. Wow. So many people. Is this working? So many people. It's so good to uh, see everybody here this afternoon. Uh, I've enjoyed my stay. I'm leaving straight after this meeting, going to Pusan. And then from Pusan, I'll go back to the United Kingdom. I just heard today that it's snowing where I live. <laughs> so I'm going back into the snow. <laughs> uh, it's wonderful what God has done in Handong University. You know, I've been coming here. I think the university's been open 20 years. Is that right? I've been coming here for 20 years. It's a long time. <laughs> now, I don't even think about it, actually. But... Uh, yeah, for 20 years. I came to the first uh, HDS, the second HDS. And uh, I've always been blessed in Handong University. I love this place. I love the vision. I love the, the way the Holy Spirit changes lives in this place. And the good education, the excellent results. Very, very wonderful place to be. It's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to be in this university. I hope those of you who are students here thank God regularly for bringing you to Handong University. Because if you thank God regularly for bringing you here, I'm sure he will prosper you here. And uh, he will do well. He will help you. Yeah, God is good. God is love. God is faithful. In a moment, I'm going to pray, but I want to say this before I pray. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. I always really enjoy working together with Pastor Greg. He's a man of the Holy Spirit. And you know, many of the things that he's been saying to you earlier on, and even others have been saying or singing, are about love. It's the key word this afternoon. It's God's love. And I want to share with you about God's love. It's amazing, isn't it, how God blends all things in. God works all things together so that he'll be glorified and so we'll be blessed. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for every brother and sister in this place today in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for those who love you and know you and are growing in you, as well as having their education or teaching. I thank you for those who don't yet know you. And I pray that they will come to know you. They will come to understand what it means to know you. That we're not just following a religion, but we have a living Savior who changes our lives. And Father, I pray for your blessing upon every one of us here this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to turn to Romans. If you've got a Bible, will you turn to the book of Romans? Romans chapter 8. I want to read beginning from verse 28. Uh, <clears throat> I'll probably read a few verses at a time and comment on them. And we know, 8.28, and we know that in all things... God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Our relationship with God is a love relationship. Yes, we want to obey him, we want to follow his will, we want to do what pleases him. But basically, the relationship with God is a love relationship. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, 
to die on the cross for us. It's the center of the gospel. And his love is powerful. His love changes lives. And it says, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. We love him because he first loved us. If we love God, we can be assured that God is at work for our good. Sometimes we don't understand the way, we don't understand why or how. But we have to keep trusting him because his word is always true. God's word does not deceive. God's word is always true. And the word of God is the whole counsel of God. So we read the Word of God, we pray with the Word of God, we meditate on the Word of God, we sing the Word of God. It's all truth that changes our lives. We can grow in Jesus. It's very beautiful. The love of God is very beautiful. Verse 29, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. See, God has a plan for our lives. Not just a plan for what we do, or plan for who we marry, or plan of where to go. But he has a divine plan. that's worked out in our salvation. A plan that brings change to our lives, change to our hearts, change to our minds, change to us, because he loves us. God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son for us. I meet people sometimes who are disillusioned with God or doubt God, even though they come from Christian families. They've been through certain experiences in life and perhaps nobody was able to help them or pray with them or counsel them and they began to believe the wrong things about God. That's sad. Because the word of God teaches us and tells us about the love of God and about how much he loves us and what he wants to do in our lives and how all the experiences we go through as believers, every experience we go through, good or bad, God is there and God is working and we need to trust him and hold on to him because he loves us. Verse 31, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things. Amen. God is a gracious God. God is a giving God, loving God, good God. I've been through many experiences in my life as a believer. I've been a believer now for uh, around 50 years. And I've been through many different experiences. Some of them difficult, some of them painful, some of them wonderful. <laughs> Some of them amazing. <laughs> I've been through many different experiences. But I've never, ever doubted the goodness of God. God is good. God is love. God is faithful. His word says it, and it's true. And God so loved us that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross. God is always faithful. As I say, my life hasn't been always easy. I could tell you lots of stories. I'm not going to do that. I don't have time. But I know that God is good. And God is love. And God is faithful. And I know that if you have that concept of God, and you trust in God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, if you trust in God, you will grow in him, you'll grow in faith, and you'll be stable in him, and you'll have a desire to live the kind of life that 
He wants you to live because of that love relationship that you have with him. It's so important. Love. Love. Verse 34. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. In my heart, I said a very loud Amen. Not with my mouth, but in my heart. As Pastor Greg was speak, opening this meeting, and he spoke about the cults that are taking away the divinity of Jesus or trying to deny the divinity of Jesus. Jesus Christ is God. He's God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the gospel is basically four things concerning Jesus. Number one, there's the cross of Jesus Christ. Where he was slain on the cross for us. He was punished for our sins. He took all that pain and suffering for us that we might be forgiven and made clean and washed by faith in his blood. That's the first part of the gospel. Very important. Not just inf information, but a reality. We receive him by faith as our Lord and Savior. It's a reality. When we receive Jesus Christ by faith as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to us and bears witness. And our life begins to change. Our values begin to change. Our heart begins to change. We don't just want to live for ourselves. We want to live for the glory of God and we want to live to help others too. That's what's been happening in Handong University over these years. Many people have graduated from Handong and gone into the world and are helping other people in the name of Jesus. It's wonderful. Second part of the gospel is the resurrection. Jesus rose from the, the dead the third day. The grave could not hold him. He rose from the dead. And when we are baptized, we celebrate the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have new life in Jesus. Because he lives, we can live also. It's a great miracle, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, we don't often think of this very much, the ascension of Jesus. You know about the ascension of Jesus when Jesus went back to heaven? It's all part of the gospel. If you just turn with me briefly to the, keep your marker in Romans, turn with me briefly to the very end of, of Luke's gospel. Very end of Luke's gospel. Luke chapter 24. And verse 50 until 53. Luke 24, 50 to 53. It says, When Jesus had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Just like that. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. It says, While he was blessing them, he, lift, he left them and was taken up into heaven. I love that. I really love that. While he was blessing them. So I don't think it's, he took his hands down, whoops, here I go. <laughs> I don't think he did that. I think he went back into heaven with his, arm, with his arms raised, blessing his disciples, blessing his followers. And they, it says, went back to Jerusalem and worshipped him with joy. And they stayed in the temple praising God. The ascension. Because Jesus has ascended, blessing his church. We can experience the blessing of God upon us. It's a wonderful, wonderful thought to me that Jesus never stopped blessing his church. He went back to heaven blessing the people. And he wants to bless us here tonight. Not necessarily bless us with material things, I don't know. But he wants to bless us. He wants to answer our prayers. He wants to lead us in his will. He wants to help us to grow spiritually. He wants to bless us. He doesn't want to give us a hard time. He wants to bless us. 
so we can live as a testimony. Wasn't that a wonderful testimony we heard from Tondo in the Philippines? Nobody naturally would want to go to Tondo. But our brother went and the EHGS outreach team went. And they took the blessing of the Lord to those people in Tondo. And the people in Tondo were able to hear about and to experience Jesus Christ through that blessing they took with them. Fourthly, we just read about in Romans chapter 8. It says, Jesus Christ now is in heaven interceding for us. He's interceding for us. Verse 34, Romans 8, 34. He was raised to life, he's at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Here's the fourth part of the gospel. The cross, the resurrection, the ascension, and the intercession of Jesus Christ. And there he is at the throne of God, right now, interceding for us. Praying for his church. Praying for each one of us. And his divine capability now is, 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 as the Son of God, he's able to be praying for all of us, all the time, knowing all our lives. Because he's God. He hasn't got such a long prayer list, you know, one, two, three, four, oh, when's he going to pray for me again? <laughs> no, he's praying for us all the time. He's interceding for us. It's very wonderful, the gospel of Jesus. He died for us, rose again for us, re re went up to heaven, uh, as he ascended up to heaven, he was uh, blessing his disciples. The blessing of God can come to our lives, and there in heaven, he's interceding for us. All because of the love of God. God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to read on a little bit. It says, Who shall separate us, verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Then he gives a little list there. Trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing, no one can separate us from the love of Christ. Even some people may try to separate themselves. Some people make wrong choices. Wrong choices especially about friends and relationships. And they get their life in a mess. They don't pray about their life, they don't consider about their life. They just make a, make a mess, get their life in a mess. But you know, he says here, nothing and no one can separate us from the love of Christ. Even if we've made our life a mess, Christ can restore us and renew us and bring us back into his will because he loves us, because he died for us and rose again for us and intercedes for us. Yes, sometimes we make mistakes, big mistakes. But it says here, Christ is praying for us, interceding for us, and nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Notice specifically here, it doesn't say nothing can separate us from the love of God. It says nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. He loves us. He went to the cross loving us. He rose again loving us. He ascended loving us. I'm sure he's interceding loving us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Oh, I was so thrilled today. Really thrilled when, when Pastor Greg spoke about the love of God and others have mentioned it. The love of God. And God calls us to respond to Jesus and his purpose and his plans for our lives. God calls us to worship, to worship him in spirit and in truth. But we cannot worship a God we do not know. We cannot worship a God we do not know. I'll say that once more. We cannot worship a God we do not know. And the God that we talk about here is a God that all of us can know. And we can know him through his son, Jesus Christ. God wants us to have faith in him because he loves us. 
He really does. He loves us. It says, let's come down to verse 37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So if we follow the way of Jesus, we can live as not conquerors, but more than conquerors. We can have a victorious life. We can have victory over temptation. We can have victory in our difficult times we face, especially during our study times. If we're sub studying subjects, it's difficult to learn, or it's difficult to learn in English, or difficult to learn in Korean. God can help us. He loves us. And he wants to help us. He wants us all to be more than conquerors through him. Then Paul goes on to finish this chapter. I mean, I could go over this time and time again, but it's so wonderful, and I want to share something else. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's wonderful. It doesn't mention there about our spouse or our boyfriend or our girlfriend. <laughs> but nothing, no one, can separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. His love is strong. His love has keeping power. Even if we make mistakes or even make wrong choices and decide, go the wrong way in our lives, he can bring us back. It's his plan and purpose for our lives. He doesn't want us to be on the outside. He wants us to be on the inside. God is love. God is good. And God is faithful. And nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I want to turn briefly to 2 Timothy now. 2 Timothy and chapter 1. Here, Apostle Paul is writing to the young minister, Timothy, and assuring him and teaching him and helping him to do the will of God. And obviously he was speaking of himself and of Timothy when he said in verse 7, chapter 1, verse 7, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. God has given us those three things for life. For life. He's given us power. Power to live a victorious Christian life. Power to witness. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll be my witness. Power to pray. Power to endure when we need to endure. There are times we need to endure. Difficult times, precious times. Uh, sorry, pressure times. God has given us power. Then God has given us love. He's given us love through His Son, Jesus Christ. God has given us power. God has given us love. God has given us self-control. He wants us to live that kind of life. Self-control is a fruit of God living within us. If we are not living a self-controlled life, we do not bring glory to God. We can come to many, many services. We can call ourselves believers. But if we are not living a life of self-control, that's no testimony for God, no glory for God. Because God gives us a self-control. God gives us boundaries. And he wants us to live happily within the boundaries he gives us. That's really very important. You know, all over the world, not just in Korea, but in other countries too, people are becoming bolder. And I think it starts with young people and it 
kind of work through and grow as they get older. But people are becoming bolder. And one of the things that people become bolder about is crossing boundaries and then saying, it doesn't matter, it's okay. And so if they live like that in one generation, the next generation is confused what is right, what is wrong. So we need to be a pattern of what it says here. We need to be a pattern of a people of power and of love and of self-discipline. Handong University is also a place of restoration, reconciliation with God, new anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because many people around, outside, different places, they've crossed the boundaries for their life. They don't know what's right, what's wrong. They just do it. And that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to glorify Him. In our relationships, in our studies, in our ministries, to glorify Him. To seek Him for His anointing, to seek Him for His power and His strength to be in our lives and to fill us with His love. So it says very clearly, God has given us Spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. We all have the potential to love God and to love others because God has given us love. God has given us love. And that love goes beyond boundaries. That love is pure, is powerful, it's healing, it's restorative. God has given us love. And if we've forgotten how to love or if we've been having the wrong kind of relationships and stuff like that, God wants to restore us. He doesn't want to push us around. He wants to restore us, renew us, calling us back to him. Finally, I want to show, share another scripture with you in Romans. I'm just basically sharing a few scriptures with you about love because I felt that's what I should do. It's not really a sermon, it's more of a message. <laughs> Romans chapter 5. We see the process of God in our lives here. I'm not going to describe the whole process, but I'll read it through. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ? Is your conscience clear? The freely you can come to God. Anytime you need to come to him, you can call on his name. You can have a QT, whatever you like to call it. Personal relationship with God. We've been justified by faith here. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, through whom we've gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. Are you standing in grace? Or are you standing in legalism? Has your Christianity that's been passed down to you been a, 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 a legalistic, legalistic Christianity? It's all do's and don'ts. Love isn't there, it's just do this, don't do that. God wants to restore you from that way of life. Because that's not how God intends it to be. He intends you to have a love relationship with him that you obey him because you love him. You follow him because you love him. And you know he loves you too. Not because of fear, but because of love. Not because of command, but because of love. God is a good God. And even sometimes we don't understand why, even sometimes we may feel difficult why God wants us to do something, we do it because of that love. If God's saying to us, you, you need to stop this, you really need to stop this, or you really need to go that way, trust him and do it. He's saying that to you because he loves you. He cares about your life, he cares about your future. He cares about your, your family. 
He cares about your singlehood too, if you're single. Because God is a loving and caring God. So we stand in grace. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. It says, not only, it says in verse 3, not only so, but we rejoice also in our sufferings, because you know that when, when we know that sufferings produce perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. God's working in us, producing hope. I'm going to be talking about hope in Pusan tomorrow. Hope is very important. God is a God of hope. God wants us to hope in him. He doesn't want us to lose hope. He doesn't want us to be hopeless. God wants us to be filled with hope, a people of hope. It says, verse 5, hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. So how can we know? How can we experience? How can we, how can we relate to this love of God? I think it's through the work of the Holy Spirit. Because it says here in verse 5, God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. If we are believers in Jesus, we all have the Holy Spirit. We all perhaps need more of the Holy Spirit, but we all have the Holy Spirit. And one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit that God has chosen toward us is to pour out his love into our hearts. Into our hearts. Not just into our thinking, into our hearts. To fill our hearts with his love. Love for him, love for others, love for his word to fill our hearts with his love because if our hearts are empty or if our hearts are troubled with wrong things or even filled with wrong things our life is very difficult but if our heart is filled with the love of God we can have hope and strength for the future Amen let's pray Father, Father God, Father God, I want to thank you first of all for every brother and sister in this room. I want to thank you for your love for all of us, whether we've received that love or not, whether we've opened our hearts to Jesus Christ or not. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for this theme of love that you've given to this whole service this afternoon. And I pray that you'll help us to keep on responding to that love. To allow your love to work in our lives, in our relationships. For anybody here who doesn't know you, Lord Jesus, I pray even today will be a day when they open their heart to receive Christ as their Lord and Saviour to come into touch with the love of God, to come to appreciate the love of God. I pray if there's any here who've been drifting along the wrong kind of road in their life, and they know it, that you'll bring them back into the right way, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, you know the different things you're saying to your people in this room today. And I believe you are saying different things to different people. And I pray that you'll help us respond to you Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just keep your head bowed for a moment. If you know that God is speaking to you, um, and you want to respond to him, not just now in this meeting, but you want your life day by day to begin to respond to what he's saying to you t today in this meeting, and you want to find your way back to God, whatever it is, some kind of change you know he wants to bring in your life or something he wants to do. Would you just, as a sign to God that you want to do that, you want to respond to his word, not to Chris Harrison, 
not to hand on chapel, no. Respond to God's word. If you have this desire to respond to God's word this afternoon, would you just stand up? And I want to speak a blessing over your lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I want to say thank you. Anybody else, if you want to stand, stand now, because I'm going to pray. Father, I want to say thank you to all these folks that are standing before you today. I want to thank you for the immensity of your love toward them, your grace, your commitment. My prayer is that have stood before you, you will meet them in each area that they're responding to you in. And they'll really experience your truth and your love bringing change and hope to their lives. Father, thank you for them. Thank you for their future. Thank you for your love. And I pray for your blessing, your peace, to rest upon each one in this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated.